Okay, happy Friday everyone. Today I've got Lucio Fulci's Zombie 3. Um, a bit of a dispute around the director credit on this one, as some of you probably already know. Lucio Fulci didn't actually finish shooting this film. He shot about, I don't know, it's the it's debated, but he probably shot around 50 to 60 percent of it before he left the project. And there have been a couple of different arguments given for why he left. Some people say it was because his health was poor at the time. Other people say it was because he was clashing with the producers. Either way, there was a statement issued by Fulci after the film was finished where he basically said that he doesn't even really consider it his movie and that it was a movie produced by idiots or something to that effect. Now, before we um, actually get into the movie, I just, on a side note, want to mention that, you know, in light of that comment, it made me realize that when I did a brief sort of Wikipedia read-up on Demonia, that that was a movie that Lucio Fulci made a statement on saying that the movie would have been good if it wasn't for the cinematography, which he thought was poor. Now, I didn't necessarily think that the cinematography in Demonia was poor myself, but the point is that that's like at least two times in a row now that I've watched a movie of his that I have found out um, he felt dissatisfied with, which can happen. I'm sure there's plenty of filmmakers who have movies that you know they are not happy with, even in the final product. But the way that he always sort of seemed to be sort of blaming it on someone else or pointing fingers, that, I don't know. I mean, it, whatever. I still love the guy's movies, but I mean, you know, come on here, dude. Film is a collaborative medium. Yes, there's lots of moving parts. There's lots of different people with their own individual responsibilities. I've been on enough sets now to know. But when you're the director, I mean, you can't be sitting in the captain's seat and then when the ship sinks, say that it had nothing to do with you because, I mean, you're kind of the guy. So yeah, I kind of wish that, you know, in some cases, Fulci could have maybe swallowed a little pride and not thrown the other people who worked with him on his movies under the bus. But it's not like I can exhume his grave and yell at him at this point or lecture him about it, so oh well. But on to the movie itself. I feel like despite the fact that they had to swap out the director partway through, this movie actually has a very good pace to it. And that's surprising because pacing is very much the realm of the director and you would think that having someone else come in before the movie was even finished would be a death sentence to that particular element. But fortunately, this movie has a very good flow to it it never lags, and I was never bored or felt my attention drifting at any point. And I also really like the look of the movie as well. I mean, yeah, it's not that classic Fulci vision and voice, but the exotic green locale is just something that I'm always a sucker for, whether it's an adventure movie or a horror movie like this. So I instantly gravitated to that choice without any real hesitation. In fact, I think I would say that if I had the choice between being trapped on an island with zombies or being in an entire world overrun with zombies, I would probably take the world. I mean, the Trapped Island scenario just seems so much more threatening and scary to me. And I like that the zombies in this one are a little more along the lines of what you expect in the Dawn of the Dead remake by Zack Snyder, or 28 Days Later, or Return of the Living Dead, in that rather than just lumbering around sort of slowly and clumsily, these zombies are actually fast, vicious, and at least vaguely intelligent. They're lurking, they're tracking people, they are leaping across rooms to try and get people. At one point, a zombie head that's in the freezer jumps out and tries to attack a couple. At about the 29 minute mark or so, there's an awesome zombie attack where this one zombie just bursts out of nowhere and starts going after this one girl with a machete. And even by today's standards, man oh man, that actor playing the machete zombie is throwing himself into it with such reckless abandon that it's honestly, I think, kind of a minor miracle that no one got hurt when they were shooting that scene. I mean, he is just like swinging that machete like he wants to chop the whole building down. I actually, when I was watching it, had to rewind the scene to make sure that they didn't try to speed it up to make things look more frenetic than they actually were. But upon watching it a couple more times, I think I pretty well confirmed that no, they had the frame rate consistent the entire time. This guy really is actually moving with that much speed and ferocity. If there ever was a cheap Italian giallo version of Friday the 13th, like some sort of cheap Italian Jason ripoff, I hope they got this guy to play the pseudo Jason because he holds absolutely nothing back. That was actually the point in the movie where I really perked up. There was stuff about it that I was enjoying up until then, if not loving. 
But when that machete fight happened, like that actually looked and felt like a real fight. I was so surprised and delightfully impressed, man. The fact that in this one, the virus can be spread through either biting or through just pollination in the air makes it a little bit more sort of like fraught and claustrophobic. I mean, some people might argue that that's people not making up their minds about what kind of zombie movie they want to be. And again, if you really wanted to, I suppose you could maybe sort of write that down to the fact that there were two different directors with slightly differing visions who made this movie. But for me personally, it didn't feel like it was inconsistent. I mean, it was different. You're not used to seeing them both. But there's no reason you can't. Right down to the way that when they put a zombie corpse in an incinerator, the smoke that burns and rises ends up infecting a flock of birds and making them go batshit on someone. Or bird shit, I suppose, would be more appropriate. I don't know. Pick your poison. And that feels like a very giallo sort of mentality to me. It's like one of the screenwriters loved Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds and thought to themselves, you know what's even scarier than killer birds? zombie killer birds or something like that. it could just be a coincidence maybe they never saw the birds in their life but given italian exploitation cinema's penchant for lifting and stealing things and just combining them to one big salad of pastiche i don't think it's a stretch the downside when it comes to the zombies in this movie i mean really my only major complaint about them is that the gore and makeup effects do come across very, very cheap, even by Italian B-movie standards. Like, there's a lot of scenes, even the zombie at the very end, after the radio show host who keeps popping up periodically throughout the movie, when he becomes infected and he turns to face the camera, it looks like they just poured some cheap gray putty or plaster or something like that on his face and then just splashed it with some paint. Um, there's a few zombies who have that kind of rushed, amateurish sort of look to them. And when the first zombie is reanimated at the beginning of the movie, the acting is so amateurish and over the top, it's the sort of thing that you would expect to see at a high school play. Like, it's a little embarrassing. I actually remember watching that scene and wondering, okay, so is this what I've signed up for with this one? But things did pick up not too long after that, and all was right with the world, so. And speaking of amateurish mistakes, um, when the character General Morton is talking to somebody on the phone at one point, it's supposed to be a very serious, stern scene. I think it's around like 40 minutes into the movie, something like that, maybe a little less. But he holds the phone up to talk into it, obviously. But the bottom half, the receiver, instead of being in front of his mouth where it should be, he spends the whole scene talking to someone on the phone with that receiver right under his chin like i do mean like like right back here to be fair maybe you could still be heard that way but watching it play out on screen with a slow zoom out the way that it's done puts it right up there in the hall of fame with the guy in ed wood's plan nine from outer space who has the gun and he's scratching his chin with the barrel like this it's right up there with that now i guess if i really wanted to i could go and complain about the lack of plot or the lack of character i mean the movie is populated by characters, yes, but like Harvey Keitel said in Pulp Fiction, just because you are a character doesn't mean you have character. But really, the lack of plot and characterization, while it is a legitimate criticism, I think that's just one of the reasons that Giallo is an acquired taste. Because by and large, Italian B-movies, whether we're talking about the horror movies or the westerns, they typically lack the polish of their North American Hollywood counterparts. They're poorly dubbed, often poorly acted, and the plotting tends to be very convoluted and nonsensical. But weighed against that, you've got a lot of passion, a lot of zeal, a lot of creativity, and just a good sense of fun and camaraderie. I mean, Fulci's own complaints about the experience aside, I watch a movie like this and I generally get the vibe that, you know, this might not be any sort of like contender for the best foreign film Oscar, but at least everyone involved in this movie looks like they're having fun. They all look like they actually want to be there. They look like they enjoy working together. And they never take the fact that they're making a movie for granted. Like, for all the ineptitude that you could nitpick in this movie, I feel like most people will walk away from it with the impression that everyone involved had the mentality of, holy shit, I'm getting to make a movie. This is awesome. While Zombie 3 might not be quite the classic Fulci voice and atmosphere that some people come to expect, 
it's still a fun ride and I think that you could very easily pair it for an evening with something like Return of the Living Dead or The Crazies. You know, just have some friends over, serve some snacks and drinks to watch the movie with and you'll have a blast. And that's all I got for this one. I might try to get one more up before the end of the day if I'm feeling really bold, but either way you can expect something more from me in the next day or two. Thanks for watching and happy Friday.